Total Energies company operates all around the world everyday activities that involve risks. It is up to each of us to manage these risks to protect people, the environment, and the facilities. Capitalizing on our experiences, strengthening and structuring our experience feedback, and developing a learning organization will help us to achieve the highest levels of HSE performance. The management of HSE events described in the company's rule CR-GR-HSE801 is organized into four steps. The first step is the assessment of the actual and potential severity level of HSE events. This rating is made by the entity according to a matrix and specific criteria. The second step, named Communication and Reporting, is adapted to the severity of HSE events. The communication may, for example, take the form of an alert for an event of actual severity greater than or equal to 4. Each HSE event requires the collection of information and an analysis. This is the third step in the process of HSE event management. The method chosen to analyze the event will depend on its severity level. For example, in the event of a fatal accident or of potential severity greater than or equal to 5, an HSE investigation team will be appointed. The HSE feedback step, the fourth and final step in the process, refers to writing HSE Rex documents, sharing them and achieving associated improvements. They can take the form of a brief summary document. This is known as an HSE Alert, HSE Good Practices, HSE Rex, and HSE Major Rex. They can also take the form of videos or animation films. Remember that every employee of the company can be the initiator of HSE Rex documents. These HSE Rex documents will promote information sharing, learning, and the implementation of the action plans resulting from the recommendations. In the HSE Rex process, a local Rex committee is set up within each Total Energies company entity. This committee validates HSE Rex documents that will be sent to the Corex HSE of the branch concerned. These documents will then be published in the dedicated database MyRex, the company's Rex HSE database, making them accessible and viewable by all employees. Local Corex also learn about HSE Rex documents from the branch and put in place an action plan if the recommendations are applicable. When an HSE Rex document is applicable to other branches, it is then presented in Corex interbranch headquarters and communicated to all branches. To summarize, a successful Rex process involves analyze events and identify their root causes, communicate and explain lessons learned from these events throughout the organization and especially to relevant staff, implement improvements and recommendations based on this Rex. In this process, each employee has a role to play. Safety for me, for you, for all. Technological risk. Everyone is involved and everyone has a role to play. But for this year, we focus on major accident and Rex. Rex is return on experience. So let's learn from our experiences. So that is the theme for this year. Total Energy is celebrating its 100th anniversary, a century of challenges and of technological progresses, but also is a century of great improvement in terms of safety at the workplace and on our installations. Thank you, GM. Thank you so much. As I said, one of the things we'll be doing this, this, this week and that we're doing regularly is the joint safety tour. So we are going to have joint safety tours. We're going to have safety tours on our sites during this weekend events. So the next on our agenda is the, a video from the VP Major Weeks Division, Paul Powell Beck. Dear colleagues, it's here in the Antwerp refinery that I performed my first major risk analysis 37 years ago. I was already working in the field of the prevention of major accidents at that time. And it's exactly the subject I would like to talk to you 
about today. Here the Antwerp platform is the largest integrated platform of total energies in Europe. It comprises a refinery, an olefin plant, and a petrochemical facility. 3,500 people are working here every day, putting safety at the heart of their profession. In Antwerp, as in most of our facilities in the world, we are exposed to the risk of major accidents because we are handling large quantities of dangerous goods. We need to be aware of the scenarios of major accidents. We need to be aware of how to prevent them and how to manage these risks. The World Day for Safety 2024 is an opportunity to look back at the major accidents that happened within Total Energies and within our industry. It is important to reinforce the learnings from these accidents, to avoid recurrence of these accidents. Preventing a major accident requires technical and operational skills from the people in the field. Compliance with our work methods and a strict discipline in following the safety rules. We need to ensure that the people in the field know and understand the development of major accident scenarios, that they know the barriers in the field, and that these barriers are operational at all times. I also want to draw your attention on the importance to be vigilant for small details, the so-called anomalies, because major accidents are often the result of a combination of anomalies which seem to be minor, taking apart. But in our industry, the details are important. Another lesson is our collective ability to take the right decisions at the right time at all levels, because preventing a major accident is a collaboration between all actors, which means that it transcends the organizational boundaries. Unfortunately, major accidents continue to happen. I can think of the explosions in Beirut in August 2020, or even more recently, the major explosion in the depot in Guinea-Conakry in December 2023. We need to learn from these major accidents. We need to share experience to prevent them to happen again. That's exactly the theme of the World Day for Safety. I all wish you a very excellent celebration of the World Day of Safety 2024. Safety for me, for you, for all. Um, major risk division, which reiterating the fact that we need to learn from the past accidents. We need to also understand that small details, such as little anomalies that we say, is more like the bed pyramid, no matter how small it is. If we don't, if we don't observe it, if we don't close it, they seem to generate to major now. So when you see us talk about, you know, keep sending mails on anomalies, it's because we're saying we don't want accidents on our sites, close out on these gaps and avoid any accidents. So the next on our agenda, we have the general in the house, our MD, the general manager, Total Energies Marketing, Nigerian PLC, MD, sir, for the MD's message. Please put your hands together for the MD. Bonjour. Dear colleagues, dear colleagues in uh, Abuja, Port Harcourt, Benin, uh, Coco Plants, a papa, it's a pleasure to welcome you on this uh, great day. It's our safety days. And uh, I want also to welcome people from Paris. Thank you to be here to support us for the weekends. It's a time to tell this. Thank you. Thank you again. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2024 World Day for Safety. Before diving deep into the theme of this year, I would like to appreciate each of you 
for your contribution. Improving the safety of our operation across the supply chain. Our agency statistics demonstrate our commitment to safety as one core value. This report includes eight years and a half with no fatal accident. I think it's something we should say. Thank you. Zero in total recordable injury rates. 2.5 reporting index. A good achievement knowing that last year we were at around 2.5. Now we are 2.5. Thanks for all your commitment. Zero lost time injury in almost eight years. Over three years with no process safety even. A few examples include our technical and integrity management programs, transport safety initiatives, competency development. I am convinced that we will continue to improve awareness of major HSC and safety culture given the opportunities and leadership support. We'll be learning how we can leverage Rex to first avoid further accidents, improve our standards and procedures, and make them easy to assimilate, and finally advance good practice. I use this opportunity to challenge each of you to use the various channels provided by the company to assess Rex and tools within our company and the industry to improve your knowledge and control of HSU risk in our businesses. This Rex coordinator and HSC teams and are also there to support you in the journey. Thank you again. Let's continue to do this very good report, I think, of each of you. What I said all time, HSU is for you first, for you first, for your family first, each day in your home, in your platform, in your uh, uh, in the field, in, at office, you should focus on HSC. Thank you. I wish you a happy World Day for safety and celebration. Thank you. Thank you, MD. Um, the next is um, the World Day for presentation. First, I will please um, for those. For those that have linked up um, via um, Teams meeting, can you please confirm that, send a chat to us to confirm that the volume is okay where you are. Please send a chat to confirm that the volume is okay where you are. So the next is a presentation, the what day, safety, what day for safety presentation to be taken by Aki Ode Luwadai. Please put your hands together for the camera. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, MD. Good morning, ED. Good morning, ESCO members. Good morning, colleagues, those online. So, um, I welcome you once again to this year's uh, World Day for Safety. So, yes, um, major accident and wrecks. Let's learn from our experience. So, that's what we have come here to do today, and that's what we've been throughout this week. So, yes, um, we try to capture um, a few thoughts from um, some HSA experts. We credit to them. And the first one is um, sharing awareness of the most important risks to help develop a strong safety culture. So, yes, we would always have risk. We will always have risks at different levels, some acceptable, some not acceptable. But how do we know these um, important ones? How do we know where to concentrate um, our resources? We need to come together to discuss that. An organization um, maintains a robust safety culture when all the players um, share and discuss their perception of the most significant risk, which is linked to the first one. Then return on experience generates a continuous improvement of know-how, making it possible to move from a sharing culture to a learning culture and um, towards uh, no, um, to always progress together. So that is the objective. We don't just want to share. We want to review, we want to learn together, we want to grow together. Then, um, and when I say together, um, our stakeholders, our colleagues across um, the business, then um, we learn from accidents so that um, they don't happen again. That is the goal of the return on experience. And lastly, humans have memory. 
let's share our knowledge of the most important accidents and that takes me to the next slide where we'll be reviewing some um, major accidents that has um, happened in the industry and some within um, total energies so i will start with the piper alpha um, accident which i believe uh, many of our colleagues in EP are very familiar with but maybe some of us in ms might be um, seeing this for the first time it happened in the north sea in the so um, what happened there was a maintenance work on the platform an oil production platform and during um, this maintenance work some things were not properly done in terms of i would try to reduce technical language because of non-technical people here so um, there was a maintenance work um, carried uh, out on the platform and um, in the process they tried to plug the hole so please forgive me also if i'm um, using wrong vocabularies for my hsx first so they tried to plug um, the hole which is like a small pipe where the PRV was removed from and um, during the process um, there was no proper handover a leak occur about 30 liters of um, product or condensate leaked into the platform this led to an explosion it was followed by another explosion and then um, 167 people died in that incident yes it was um, one of the accidents that you know, started um, to um, improve led to improvement of uh, HSC practices um, in the oil and gas industry the next one is Erica, which um, happened in Total Energy Trading and Shipping um, Branch. So Total hired um, a, a charter the cargo to transport every foil oil. And then due to compromising the technical integrity of the cargo um, corrosion, the cargo broke into two um, at sea. About 10 million liters, that's about 10,000 cubic of every foil leaked from the cargo. And, um, you know, of course, so the shore, the coastline, the um, birds you know, affected the aquatic life. And you know, just to conceptualize the, the impact of this incident, the coastline of Nigeria is about eight, just a little above um, 800 um, kilometers. That's the entire coastline from Lagos all the way to Delta to um, Calabar. And um, we have 400 kilometers polluted. So imagine if half of our coastline is polluted. If you have to drive all the way across, uh, along the coastline, all the way to Delta, and all you can see is oil pollution, that is the significance of this um, accident. The next one is uh, the T side error. It's um, in the electrical um, business, gas, gas, renewable, and power, not in total energies, but for those that have been here earlier. So, and today we, as total energies, we are in the electrical business too. So, this led to two fatali uh, three fatalities born to the war happened. They were trying to work on um, um, the power plants. They could not shut down, so they had to like improvise and drop because the voltage was too heavy or too high to shut down. So they had to improvise to lower the voltage and then um, work on it. They thought it was safe, and in the process, the transformer oil which was provided provided exploded, and three people died in that incident. And it was clear that one, um, some of them were born, or three of them were born beyond um, recognition. The next one is the bonds field uh, incident, which many of us are familiar with. So it was also um, presented and reviewed during the last uh, World Day for Safety. So I won't talk on that. And another one that, uh, uh, that's the deep water uh, uh, horizon, usually called Makondo. Um, I have personal uh, attachment to that because I followed it for um, weeks, you know, um, when it then occurred there, uh, because it was always broadcasted every day on the uh, BBC. So we have 11 deaths, 5 million liters, which is about uh, 700 and uh, 700 and something thousand liters spilled you know, into the sea uh, and then uh, covered about 1,000 kilometers of uh, coastline, which is like traveling all the way from Lagos to Kano. And all you can see is oil spill. That's the impact of that incident. What happened? They were trying to plug a hole. It happened in the uh, uh, offshore, trying to plug a hole, and then uh, the barrier that was used was not properly tested. And then due to technical integrity failure, the gas leaked. You, know, you assume that it had been safely blocked, but it leaked to the surface. There was an ignition source on the surface of the rig, and then this led to the explosion of the rig. Three days after, um, the rig, you know, this rig, some of them are as, uh, as big as, or bigger than this building. Maybe the, the, the potter can testify to that. <laughs> so um, the next one is the Netherlands uh, incident, which is also an electrical accident. Two fatalities, 
four people got to the top of the turbine to that the wind turbine to work on it and then two of them were more experienced two were less experienced the less the more experienced guys they escaped the two guys less experienced one 19 the other one 21 they were trapped if you go to the youtube you know very touching um a movie uh oh, let me say not story the two of them were holding themselves you see at that way they were trapped there and at some point one of them had to you know and then he dropped all the way 80 meters down died the other one was trapped in the nacelle and was born to get the young recognition and of course this also changed um, the way uh accident has been happened have, have been managed um, and also redesigned of uh, wind turbines um, in the um, the, uh, gas, renewable gas and power um, in industry. So the next one is the Capco um, incident which happened in the refinery in Qatar. What happened there? They were trying to start a new unit and um, they had to drain some of the um, liquid. When you drain, you need to evaporate it through, through an eater. Let me call it like a, a steam eater to make sure that you, you burn it out in the flaring. So in the process, um, this was not well sized, maybe design, operational issues, and um, too much liquid enter into the, um, the drum. And um, because this, these are pyogenic uh, liquids, they, they operate at very high temperature. It led to the brittleness about minus 100 degrees Celsius. So when it touched the metal, instead of it to go into that metal in um, a gaseous form, it entered into the liquid form because it wasn't able to boil everything out on time. And this led to weakness of the metal. The metal gave way. There was a vapor um, cloud around it, and this led to explosion and collapse of the um, flaring uh, stack. And uh, of course, we were lucky there was no fatality. However, there was a um, shutdown. So the most broad um, accident, I won't talk about that because we will see it um, in the other side. And the last one is the Nomadi refinery fire. Luckily, there was no accident with that. This also happened in total energies. And um, yes, 19 months of uh, this unit, uh, of, of, of months, uh, this unit was shut down without production. So the next slide is. Yes. Recent accident reminds us that major accidents can still occur in the industry. We've seen all these things. So why do we still have these accidents you know, taking place? That means there's still a gap. And that's what we are trying to be reminded of here. The um, ammonium nitride storage explosion. I'm sure many of us will still remember that it was all over the news um, in 2020 in Lebanon. And then in this explosion, I think about $7 billion in education, over 200 and something people died. And then, of course, uh, it's one of the um, worst um, disaster, not in the oil and gas, but at least in the chemical industry. There is one very close to us. It happened in a uh, town farm at uh, uh, Apapa, very close to us there. And um, luckily, there was no fatality. However, uh, we could say there was environmental pollution because about 8 million liters of product you know, was completely burnt into the atmosphere because they could not uh, quench the fire, so they had to burn down the product. So, and it's happened for almost three days, and many of uh, the crisis management team, uh, many of members of the crisis management team were directly involved in monitoring this um, because it was very close to our own depot. And the last one is uh, the one that happened last year in Conakry, Guinea, in December. Um, we had fatalities. Um, the news, some stated 13, some 18, so we are not about the unfortunate thing that there was, there was a fatal accident and uh, you know, it happened in the town farm, which shows that these things still happen and can still happen if we don't learn from um, previous accidents. Next slide, please. So, um, we'll quickly look at um, the most broad accidents, what happened, what can we learn from it, and we have a quick video of that. On Thursday, October the 4th, 2018, at the Mostarod II depot in Egypt, the Tank 08 upgrade is almost completed, ending a two-year's conformity program on the two depots. 
A team of six workers are located nearby the Tank 08. One of them is about to weld some missing meshes on the vents of the Tank 08. At 9.27 a.m., the tank suddenly exploded. The roof was torn off and fell down 40 meters away onto the roof of the loading gantry. Two people died, two were severely wounded and two others had light injuries. Master Rod 1 depot was closed for four days and Master Rod 2 reopened only in June 2019 after eight months to give the time to disassemble the damaged tank. To understand what happened, we need to go back two days earlier to the 4th of October 2018 on Tuesday, the 2nd of October, two days before the accident, tank 09 is already filled up with gasoline and tank 07 is about to be put back in service. The common spade which was used to isolate the tanks 07 and 08 has to be moved to isolate tank 08 only for the remaining completion of work and to allow for tank 07 to be put back in service. The previous spade has been changed into blind flange and installed inside tank 08. When putting back tank 07 in service, the product has filled the common pipeline. The gasoline filled the pipeline linked to tank 08 through the new valve that was left open, the check valve and up to the blind flange installed inside the tank 08. The valve was only closed in the afternoon of Wednesday the 3rd. On that Wednesday the 3rd, some works have been achieved inside the tank 08. In the evening, at 6.30 p.m., the blind flange has been removed to allow the internal diffuser to be installed. When unscrewing the blind flange, some gasoline traces have been noticed inside the tank 08. Therefore, the valve has been closed to allow the complete blind flange removal, and the gasoline has been recovered and cleaned from inside of the tank 08 with fabric and bucket. The internal diffuser has then been installed and the manhole of the tank 08 has been closed, ready to put this tank back in service. When the blind flange was removed, around 15 litres of gasoline was still stuck behind the valve flapper. During the night, the gasoline spilled into the tank. The gasoline started to evaporate under the internal floating roof. It is possible that the gasoline vapours went over the floating roof, through the roof vent or floating screen seals. The necessary information were not transmitted. The removal of the isolation device was not mentioned in the handover logbook. The construction manager or project manager have not issued any isolation diagram. Presence of gasoline inside the tank was not mentioned to anybody. On the morning of the accident, the team of six workers was located nearby tank 08 to complete the remaining external works. The project manager was not yet on site and the work started without him present. That day, the project manager and the team of workers were aware that the isolation of the tank 08 has been removed the previous evening. The construction manager noticed some missing meshes to be fixed on the vents of the tank 08. As the vents could not be removed, too heavy, decision was taken to do the welding on the top of the tank. HSC depot staff was asked for a hot work permit but without the information about the tank being put back in service. Thus, the permit was granted without field verification. An explosivity monitoring was put in place on the roof of Tank 08, but no explosivity test has been done inside the Tank 08. While grinding, an incandescent particle has fallen inside the Tank 08 through the opened vent holes and has ignited gasoline vapours which led to the explosion. A major HSC Rex has been issued following the Mosterod incident. This major HSC Rex includes Isolation Choice of isolation The type is validated by a risk analysis to be done by physical disconnection or spading closest to the tank and outside with appropriate method statement. Isolation diagram as part of communication documentation during the isolation process listing the isolations and associated sequences. A hydraulic isolation certificate to be obtained before any work on tank. Lotto, L-O-T-O, lock out, tag out. Isolation means must be locked and tagged in the field. Degassing and check for the isolation. Tank must be adapted to safety conditions by implementing the following actions. Emptying, cleaning, 
Degassing, checking the absence of hydrocarbon and gas. Some measures are performed using suitable equipment in good working order, gas detection using an explosimeter, etc. Degassing certificate is established to confirm the absence of hydrocarbon and gas at the time of issuing. Work permit, hot work. Internal and external monitoring of the explosivity. Specificities of the site must be taken into consideration and planned measures checked to be effectively in place. End of work. Steps of the end of work process to be enforced before putting the tank back in service. Documented end of work task performed. Handover between teams must be enforced when bringing a tank back into service. In local practices and procedures, the use of isolation diagrams and isolation lists to formalize and monitor isolations and also to define the communication between teams based on these documents. End of the work acceptance certificate or completion checklist to be carried out in a contradictory manner. Checklist before bringing the tank back into service or start-up permit once different types of work have been performed on it to be carried out in the presence of all parties. So thanks to the team that has um, put this together for our learning. Um, but one important thing that um, you would see from this um, Rex is many um, gaps led to this accident. And most uh, major accidents in the same thing, investigation has shown that at least three to four gaps leads to um, this kind of accident. And that means if we um, are aware of these risks at every level, whether at the operational level, at the uh, head office level, you know, at the management level, then even contractors, we are likely to be able to avoid um, all these kind of accidents. In fact, there's this saying that um, all accidents are avoidable, and we need to go with that. You know, we need to start having that mindset, you know, as part of our HSC culture that all accidents are avoidable. So I won't um, go so deep into this. I will just. Um, look at um, the courses and then um, what which of course has been detailed there. So these courses were classified into human organization and technical. And of course, um, lack of understanding of the um, permit to work process. You know, there was no compliance. We saw the way the permit to work was handled. It was issued without going to the field. Someone is in the office is issuing a permit to work when it's supposed to go there and actually verify what's on the field. So there was a gap. There was a um, lack of knowledge, knowledge um, of, of um, the hazard associated with gasoline. So just 15 liters of gasoline led to that explosion. So if someone had a thorough knowledge of um, gasoline, he wouldn't have um, played with that. He would have reported when he saw that there was a gasoline, he saw that proper checks would have been carried out again. Then organizational issues, the work was not well planned. So yes, even in our projects, we need to look at things properly. We need to be able to establish a process for communication. We need to be able to do the work for the first time and get it right. Because if the work was done the first time and was correctly done and well planned, there wouldn't have been um, the repeat of that work as well. So then the technical isolation, which was the major problem or the immediate cause, uh, the isolation process was not properly followed. They were supposed to blind flank outside the tank. They blind flank inside the tank, which you can't even see. You know, someone can easily miss that. So, of course, there's a lot to learn from that um, if you go deeper. So, what has this accident changed in the safety of our operation? Yes, the way we handle auto work and tanks. Have we been doing uh, some of these things before? Yes, we've been doing before. But the good thing about um, this Rex is that it has helped us to understand better the practices across the branch and to be able to share experience and knowledge. Before now, I remember in 2019 when the HSC awareness um, workshop was done um, around, and in fact, I think there was a workshop in Nigeria then um, where we had majority across the branch, even people came from other African countries to join us in EPNS altogether. And I think then I noticed that there was a gap in the way we handled these things. You see, our our C team saying that, oh, this is how we handle our isolation, MS things, things like this is the tool we use to handle isolation, EPR saying this is the procedure we use to handle isolation. But today we have um, a shared understanding on how isolation should be handled safely, and this has got into our procedures and you know, part of our experiences. Next slide, please. So I want us to also look at, um, um, uh, would I say, yes, I would call it an incident, 
um, but maybe not uh, a major one that happened in our own athletes here. Yeah? So, because uh, we shouldn't just be looking at we should look in world too. This happened in, in the pipeline um, in um, Apapa, that's our own depot. This pipeline takes product from the jetty to the terminal. An inspection was carried out on this pipeline. The routine inspection was, was carried out on this pipeline in 2019. And um, after the inspection, a report was issued, it was analyzed, um, and then the pipeline was put back into service. And shortly after the real work, real work started, that's the railway from Apapa all the way to the, um, I think, the north or so. The real work started, and then during this process, the um, earth mover or the heavy duty machine moved because they were constructing a trench, and you can see the pipes were exposed. So, due to expo so after this, um, the, the trench was backfilled. This trench was to protect the pipeline from uh, pressure if the rail or the, the train is passing over because the train was supposed to pass over this space. And probably, maybe due to um, improper compaction, the, the, there was um, like a gap under the, the pipeline. So when the, um, yes, we were not there, we didn't see everything, but that was uh, the investigation. So when the um, equipment moved over, it probably it compressed, exerted pressure on the pipeline, and then it leaked. But we can say that was the immediate cause. But the root cause is um, traced to the fact that it leaked at a corroded point. Why was that corrosion not detected earlier in 2019, just... Um, less than a year before this accident happened. The methodology that was used to carry out the inspection, you know, um, did not um, actually detect that particular spot. And also the review was not uh, robust enough. And what has this done to us? It has helped us to, you know, improve uh, pipeline surveillance process, especially when works is being carried out uh, by third parties around our pipeline right away. So today we have a more improved uh, process for monitoring third party works around our pipeline. Also, um, uh, an inline inspection was carried out after this, where a proper and the hundred percent of the pipeline was inspected. Yes, the method that was used before was also allowed. It's, it's, a, it's a validated method, but in this case, probably would have made more analysis to see that maybe we could use a, a more improved method, and it was used. And after that, we also had analysis from different parties, from the contractors, from experts, from one tech, which um, we all learned from. You know, as a team, it gets your operations and technical, and it does also improve our understanding of pipeline inspection and technical integrity. Right, the next slide, please. So yes, um, a success, a, sorry, a successful process, a uh, rex process means what? So we are talking of um, how do we manage uh, a, a rex process to be effective? Because it's not just um, um, the head office or at the branch level; it has to be managed locally too. Um, we start with reporting the HSC incidents, and I want to encourage each and every one of you that uh, when we have incidents, we should not um, conceal them, we should not hide it. It should be, we should an asset for improvement, for learning. So, and we should you know, systematically report this, report the details, don't hide anything. If these people have hid something from us, we won't be learning from them today. So, um, gathering information about the HSC incident as quickly as possible. We must have a team in place. It's not when the incident happens or that we start putting a team together to review that. We should have a process in place where we have people that are ready to quickly analyze and know what to do to gather the um, information. Then we need to analyze this um, HSC incident by integrating human and organizational factors. Almost all major accidents involve going there. Yes, we have the technical factor, but the human factor is a key component of. Um, HSC uh, that is the key component of um, investigation, and um, we also need to share information with the right people. We don't just do these beautiful um, um, reports, analysis, and we keep it in the database. We need to take it to the operational level, go to the people that are affected, know who are the people that are concerned that this rate will apply to, and train them on it so that they have a deeper understanding. The learning or the knowledge is passed across, and then implementation and follow up of recommendations with regular review actions. So when action plans are developed like that, we, but then we need to review how effective as, um, these actions that have been put to place. Are they effective? Maybe after six months, maybe after a year. And um, one good thing that um, we also need to 
understand about um, getting um, an effective red process is we need to work as a multi team. Don't say, oh, this is a, a technical issue. We will consider just technical team. Look at people across the business. Bring the, the sales guy if you think he has an impact to play. Bring the operations guy if you think he has an impact to play. Bring the HSC guy if you think he has an impact to play and sit together because the way we will view this issue will be different and of course will um, help us get better as well. Then appoint people in charge of actions. So it's not just stopping at it. When you, we have actions like that, we need to appoint someone. It could be more than one, two, three. We have the resources and we make sure that they track those actions. Then explain in the field why this uh, REX is important and what its implementation will bring. So this should be part of our process. And we need to ensure the implementation of the action. We need to follow. Don't see if you are responsible for an action, don't just um, take it by the word that, oh, it's been done. Go there, verify, and confirm that it has been done. So if the lessons learned from an accident are rigorously implemented, the same accident cannot happen again. And um, I would like to say we, we all have a role to play in contributing to Rex performance. So whether you are in purchasing, whether you are in finance, whether you are in HR, you know, we all have a role to play. So if you think you don't have a role to play, you can ask me a question after and I will tell you the role you need to play in um, this HS way. So the Rex benefit. Yes, uh, four benefits have been identified by the company um, that we can gain from Rex. And the first one is avoiding further accidents, which we said earlier, improving our standards and making it easier to learn the rules, then advancing good practices. Rex is not just about um, accidents, reviewing incidents. Yes, if we see good practices, we can collect them and share with others. Like I've been seeing some recently um, projects around the world they develop a database, it has nothing to do with HSC, it's just technical progress and they share their experience on that. Then remembering and the accidents and lessons learned to use them daily. So we don't just keep them, we, we need to integrate them into our projects, into our operation. So these are just examples of um, how some of these um, wrecks in the past as uh, avoid accident or, you know, just to show examples of some of these four benefits. So the first one, avoiding further accidents. So this um, is just a um, uh, rex from the Normandy refinery we talked about. And after this rex was issued, um, an athlete's uh, site in Myanmar, um, the kind that's trillion, trillions are like pipes, um, blind, blind um, to support pipes. So it's like a, a pipe support, you can just check it online. So they carried out a um, um, trillion inspection. We also did that at, um, at our depot, and we had um, some improvements in that, but I won't focus on that today. So, and during the process, one of the trillion was, a, was on a two inch high pressure uh, gas line, which if leaked could have had serious consequences. So this IPO um, issue or uh, uh, event was averted due to deployment of the wrecks from the uh, from the Normandy refinery fire. So this is an example of how we can learn from wrecks. The next one is next slide. So improving our standards and making it easier to assimilate. So um, example is the Mostoroid accident. So after this, we had the major wrecks that was issued. This was um, developed into awareness kits that people could learn from across the business. And um, we also have a major rex video, which you know we can see today. And many of us, even the people in operations, can use as a tool to to carry out safe operation. Then evolution of the company rules. This has led to um, change in the permit to work or update or review of the permit to work process, which is you know a major part of uh, the micro audit today. And then also review of some um, documents in terms of permeable and combustible liquid storage. And yes, the metric, like I, I said, then the database fortification. Today we have a more uh, robust database. You can access Rex from across the business, whether you in EP, the MS, the GRP, anywhere. And we all have access to these things. They are there online. So remembering accident and lessons learned to use them daily. So like this is um, the MS uh, Rex database, digital application tool. This is outside total, but we have access to it. We can, it's linked. Um, we are linked to it and we have the risk advisor which is coming up uh, very soon so the rex is our memory and most of the accident causes most of the accident causes have already been identified you should use them daily to share about it to prepare your risk analysis 
your shutdown, your projects, and um, your training. So during the week, I get during the workshop, some of these uh, um, database, they will have the opportunity to learn how to access them for people that are not used to using them. And um, the last last slide, okay, like you said, advancing good practices. So this one is very clear. We have the HSC plus tools, so you can upload it, a good practice that um, you have uh, seen in your athletes up there, and then people can learn from it and deploy it in, the, in their um, projects and things like that. Thank you. Can we please celebrate Akiyo Day? Thank you. Thank you, Dari. Can we please celebrate him now? 20, 30 minutes standing, dishing it out. He did excellently well. I'm proud of you, Akiyo Day. The next one is, we're trying to make this place, the events, the all that we've learned into something very special. For this year's event, we decided to include a, a game. We're learning from it. And we're going to have beautiful prizes to the winner. We have uh, what we call, who wants to be a millionaire? So please, <laughs> we're bringing on board Taiwo, Taiwo Koka, to please handle who wants to be a millionaire. Hello, everyone. I am Taiwo Koka, and I welcome you to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> I am true to be your host for this wonderful game where we'll be testing our knowledge while we also have fun. So, uh, let the game begin. Uh, I would like to choose two contestants from the audience. So, uh, please, uh, let's volunteer. I need just two people. I want to make two people millionaires today. So, uh, from the audience, uh, two lucky people, please. <laughs> No problem. No problem. I have a lot to give away. So many exciting prizes. So anyone from this side? One person, please. If I, can share I have money. I, I have money to give out. I have money to give out. Taiwo, I was going through the mails that we had during 20, 2019. Who wants to be a millionaire? And he then said something. Someone sent a mail to him. And he replied. He headed it as saying, um, Rex. The person said she was here and they didn't come out. And she knew all the answers. And she missed that um, gift. I think it was um, yes. She didn't. Yes. I saw the Rex and I was just laughing. I, was, I saw the mail. So come out now. You have something for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Exciting questions. They are not difficult. We just discuss them. Coming out. <laughs> So, I have um, contestant number one. Your name, please. Mr. Jamie, you're welcome. So, um, I have 14 questions. Uh, you're going to be answering seven. Uh, you have one lifeline you can choose, to, uh, which is call a friend. And you can call any of your friends anywhere in the world to answer the questions for you. So, let's begin. Let's encourage Jamie now. Let's encourage you. Mr. J Three of these are major wrecks in Total Energies Group. A. Bonfield, Monad, Mon Monad, and Normal, yeah, and Monstroid. B. Piper Alpha, Monstroid, Deepwater Horizon. C. Capo, Erica, Seaside, and what? Final answer. Final answer. Are you sure? Okay. The correct answer was Bonfield, Nomad, and Monstroy. Nomad, apologies. Uh, next question. All 
all of these are so sources of works except a anomalies b good practices c accidents d sanctions remember you have a lifeline Sanction. Is that your final answer? The sanction. Okay, computer. Let's see the final answer. The correct answer. Correct. Congratulations. Next. All accidents can be avoided, true or false? True. Correct. Congratulations. Mention two sources or databases to access regs in the company. A. My regs. B. HSC Toolbox. C. Safety Plus. D. All of the above. All of, the, all of the above. Let's see if you're correct. Congratulations. Next question, please. Major accidents are events with A. High severity and low probability. B. Low severity and high probability. C. High severity and I probably see I see I probably Wow <laughs> Next question please Which of this team is responsible for preventing a major accident in the depot A operations team B purchasing team C Finance team D. All of the above. All of the above. Wow. Correct. <laughs> so you, uh, out of your seven questions, you have six, and then you want one more. So can we please celebrate him? Just. You see how easy it is? He wasn't even sure of himself, but he got six out of seven. Let's please celebrate him, please. Do we have a second contestant? Anyone from, from um, online, please? Anyone? <laughs> Mr. AJ, Mr. AJ! Woo! <laughs> Mr. L Mr. AJ! Yes! Oh, uh, okay. Uh, we must still come now. <laughs> A round of applause for Mr. AJ and Ifoma. <laughs> so you know the rules, and uh, we already have. A, uh, yes, I would be asking one after the other, and um, please take note. You know, someone has six already, so uh, the prize will be going to the uh, person with the highest score. Um, the rules are simple. We have thirty seconds for each question and you have a lifeline you can call a friend anywhere in the world so next question please i will start with you sir the management of hsc events organized into how many steps a two steps b six steps c four steps d ten steps b Six steps. B. Is that your final answer? <laughs> nah. The lifeline you have is to call a friend. <laughs> my friend. <laughs> okay. Uh, six. Six. Let, let me say by uh, six. Okay, steps. computer. Let's see if this is the correct answer. You missed it. Okay, next question. 
the steps to take in managing HSP. The following: A. Collection of information at least and writing to Rex documents. C. Evaluation of the actual and potential severity level of HSC events. D. Communication and reporting. All of the above. Okay, let's see. Correct. So, I'll be going to you next. Next question, please. REX is an acronym for A. Return on expenditure. B. Reporting of events. C. Return on experience. C. D. Return on exposure. C. Final answer? C. Correct. Correct. No, no, you said C. C. Uh, sorry, nah, I mean to return. You're wrong. Ah, <laughs> oh, you tried to C. Okay, okay, okay. Co correct, correct. <laughs> You're correct. A round of applause for him. A round of applause for him. <laughs> if I didn't get that, then I should be disciplined. <laughs> correct. Next question, please. Madam Informa. Rex does not provide opportunity to learn from successes and disseminate good practices. A. Disseminate good practices. A. True. B. False. True or false? Final answer. True or false? No, no, no. True. No, no. Disregard that. True or false? B. False. Let's see if it's correct. Correct. Next question. Which of the total energies centenary celebration achievement is incorrect? A. This year, total energies is celebrating its 100th year anniversary, a century of no challenges and technological progress. B. This year, total energy is celebrating its 100th year anniversary, a century of improvement in terms of safety at the workplace and technological processes. C. This year, Total Energy is celebrating its 100th anniversary, a century of Rex recommendations and applications. A. Yes. Final answer? No, no, no. This, he said that is incorrect. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. Okay, final answer. A. Let's see if it's correct. It's, co it's correct. Now, if they say, look at it, incorrect, incorrect, incorrect. <laughs> ah, don't confuse me now. <laughs> A round of applause for him. <laughs> Next question, please. Of the nine selected historic major accidents, which accident occurred in MS depots? A. Piper Alpha. Norman. Normandy. Normandy accident. B. Capo and Seaside Error. C. Monsteroid and Deepwater Horizon. D. Bonfield and Monsteroid. D. You have a lifeline. Final answer. D. Are you sure? D. Correct. Next question, please, for you, sir. What was the cause of most accidents? A. Lack of understanding of the work permit, proper isolation inside the tank, inside tank eight. Permits issued without suitable checks and inspection on the field. B. Allowing flammable vapors inside tank 8. Lack of knowledge of the dangers related to gasoline 
permits. Permits was issued without suitable checks and inspection on field. C. The vent cover grill was welded to the floor before reinstallation. D. A. B. D. Final A, B, answer? C. Yeah, D. Let's see if it's correct. Sorry, that was the wrong answer. Madam Ifoma, to you. This is ours. The Apapa gasoline underground pipe leak leak changed the safety of our operations in what way? A. It improved pipeline surveillance process. B. It improved the quality of inspection programs. C. It improved detailed pipeline integrity check. D. D A, B, and C. A, B, C. Final answer. Correct. Next. The following are the causes of the Apapa pipe. A. External corrosion on a grid weld in an area where external protective coating was damaged. B. Corrosion not detected during the pipeline integrity check. C. The surveillance team were sleeping all night. D. Inspection techniques used in December 2019 have a leak of detection of defects. Your time starts now. I think C, C. The surveillance team were sleeping all night. Final answer. Let's see if, if it's correct. Wow. <laughs> now on to you, Madam Ifoma. <laughs> Return on experience involves the following. A. Possi possible to move from a sharing culture to a learning culture. B. Promotes the learning and understanding of the rules. C. Gathering the knowledge acquired and making it available to the teams. D. All of the above. All of the above. Correct. How am I going to have a winner? <laughs> I'm out of questions. <laughs> so, uh, my my auditor, <laughs> who is leading? So, GM, sir, an extra question. just one golden question. In the past 12 months, you know we always shout, Nemis, 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 Nemis. So in the past 12 months, 12 sliding months, what have we achieved as an affiliate in the reporting index? Okay, for a friend. For a friend. So let's give options. Let's give options. Okay, okay. Let's give options. Let's give options. A. 3.0. B. 3.2. C. 3.5. D. 3.8. Pony friend. <laughs> Let's go. 
Bara bara mosi. You have 30 seconds. Madam NG. I don't know how I enter. Mobile number, okay. Your time is up. Thank you. Hi, Ore. Hi, Chris. Yeah, so um, what is the reporting index as at January 3rd? 12 months. 3.5. 3.5. Are you very sure? Final answer 3.5. I love you. <laughs> so, what's your final answer? 3.5. Correct. A round of applause. So, seven of seven. Sorry, who did you call on this uh, reporting index? Yeah, I called my friend. Who is your friend you call? Always, always, where, where is he working? Oh, that's a good one, eh? A round of applause for her. So, on behalf of the managing director and other members of the ESCO, so we are just to appreciate you. I think I have the MD approval to appreciate both of you. Hmm. So, she, she, she will get a total card worth 100,000 Naira. So, Jamil, a total card of 80,000 Naira. So, thank you, the moderator. Thank you, Gina. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, MD. We really appreciate it. Le 13 janvier, le groupe Hutchinson a été victime d'une cyberattaque de type ransomware. Et donc, il y a un cryptovirus qui est entré dans nos systèmes d'information et qui a causé un certain nombre de dégâts. Tout s'est arrêté pour tout le monde. Ça a été un petit peu compliqué de comprendre exactement ce qui se passait. On a décidé d'arrêter tous les systèmes. Cette décision a été relativement grave dans la mesure où on a déconnecté l'ensemble des sites du système d'information avec un effet onde de choc qui s'est propagé dans l'ensemble des sites Hutchinson. Ça a été relativement difficile pour l'ensemble de l'équipe Supply puisqu'on est vraiment en gestion client. Donc, contact client, gestion de la donnée d'entrée, des programmes et tout ce qui vient 
alimenter le système. L'utilisateur, euh, euh, monsieur tout le monde, il s'est retrouvé euh, sans capacité de se connecter sur son ordinateur d'avoir ses mails, sa messagerie, de pouvoir récupérer des fichiers, envoyer des fichiers, de contacter ses clients, ses fournisseurs. Toutes ces actions-là sont devenues de facto impossibles. Ce qui a nécessité de travailler complètement en manuel, donc chose qui jusqu'à présent ne s'était jamais produite, aussi bien au niveau approvisionnement, planification des besoins de production que la gestion des commandes clients et de la planification. En temps normal, nous livrons entre 800 et 1000 pièces chez nos clients chaque jour. Nous avons réduit de moitié du fait du cryptovirus et des problèmes qu'il a généré. Ça a été un peu compliqué avec les équipes du fait de la restriction du matériel informatique. Il y avait une dizaine d'écrans pour 600 personnes, donc il a fallu gérer les permanences, les plannings un petit peu des gens. Et en ça, c'était compliqué, donc les gens ne travaillent pas à 100%. La cyberattaque a eu pour conséquence des retards dans la livraison des commandes chez le client et des approvisionnements des matières premières. Un des clients nous a vraiment pénalisé. On n'a pas pu travailler avec lui dans de bonnes conditions et on subit toujours les aléas aujourd'hui. Notre plan de travail avec l'ensemble des responsables IT au niveau des activités, au-delà des sites, était en premier lieu de faire l'analyse de bilan des sites qui ont été infectés. Combien de machines, combien de PC, combien de serveurs, combien de systèmes. Et une fois qu'on a eu ce rapide bilan, donc on a décidé de déconnecter les sites et on a fait un plan de priorisation. Ce plan de priorisation a visé à remettre en route sous certaines conditions très strictes un certain nombre de systèmes importants comme les ERP qui permettent à une usine de, de gérer, de pouvoir livrer, de pouvoir facturer, de pouvoir faire un certain nombre d'actions importantes. Forcément, on doit rester vigilant, se mettre à jour par rapport à l'actualité dans la cybersécurité, adapter nos systèmes, les maintenir à jour, avoir les bons gestes, avoir de la vigilance quand ils traitent un mail, une information, un nombre de fichiers, et donc de demander si un jour on a un doute, et de dire est-ce que je peux faire ça, est-ce que c'est suspicieux, parce que les attaques peuvent avoir plusieurs formes. Une crise de quelques heures peut générer des mois, voire des années de travail. Les collaborateurs ont compris l'impact que pouvait avoir une cyberattaque et l'importance de rester vigilant. Protocol will observe. I believe the video is self-explanatory. The main thing uh, we want us to pick out from this is that cyber um, incident is real, and we need to be cyber alert and alert. I'm alert and aware. So, what exactly are we asking from you? We need your commitment. We need your we need your cooperation and your alertness. So when we tell you that USB port, for instance, will be blocked, you need to understand that the aim is not to make work difficult for you, but in order to make our network safe and secure for all of us. All this um, video can be related to us, brought to bring back to us in MS. Um, take, for instance, Lagos blending plants, and the, um, they wake up one morning and they are unable to access their computers. After the salesman has gone to the BTB client, secure contract, um, deals, close out deals, payment made, and for instance, Treasury Finance cannot confirm the payment, the plant cannot contact the warehouse to deliver certain or agreed um, details, and so on and so forth. So what are we saying? This thing is real and it's coming home. So we need to remain cyber alert and be committed and cooperate with the IT team as we guide us all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We're going to pull our champion with the Yemis champions. We have said earlier on that um, we have said earlier on that um, if you go to the videos, they've always said that maybe they're the board. When you see something, you would, and you close it. And that is why every time you see us push out mails, we encourage us to do. A lot of sites, all the sites have actually participated. But we decided to look at those that have pushed in and um, recorded the highest number of names. So we call on our GM, GMHSQ, to please um, anchor the segment. Miami's champions. Please celebrate GM, please. Good morning once again. 
post-COVID. That is to be precise year 2021 and 2022. We had problem in achieving our reporting index. So in Q1 2023, we did not achieve our objective for the reporting index. Then, of course, after that quarter, we got a matching order from the MD that we should do what is humanly possible to ensure that we meet our reporting index objective from Q2 2023. Then we look at it, how, what, and what can we do to ensure that we meet this objective. So number one, that is very, very important in safety management system is leadership commitment. So I think we got that uh, leadership commitment, sincere leadership commitment from the MD and other members of the ESCO, because this one is very, very important. So we took it as a challenge. And of course, the members of the ESCO still now, they are still in the forefront of driving this objective. Then another thing we did last year was that awareness and training. We trained many staff on the Ramses. Even this year in the Q1, we have trained almost 30 staff again for this year. We have trained almost 30 staff on Ramses because Ramses is a tool that we use to report all our events, including Miamisis. Then we look at it that we need to maybe increase the channels of reporting Miamisis. So if you look at on all the floors, we have a box there where we have the form there. So it's just for you to pick a form, report it, and put it in the box. And with a um, IT department, so we generate what we call a QR code. So that is, you can just scan it. It's everywhere. We posted it everywhere. You can just scan it, then report the near misses, click submit, and of course, someone in HSEQ will receive it. And that person will do the job to key it into the Ramses. So with this, for last year, as a company, so we surpass our reporting in these objectives. The target last year was 2.5, and of course, we recorded 3.20. So, but the objective this year has gone up. It is now 3.0. But if you look at the 12 months sliding, so we are at 3.5. But we need to do more work. Because in January, it was 3.08. In February, so we came down 2.88. But in March, it was 3.22. So the cumulatively, we are having 3.5. So we just want to use this opportunity to appreciate all of you, everyone here, the people that are online, all our staff. So we appreciate all of you for ensure that we meet these important objectives. But you know, today, so we want to appreciate the people that actually, on behalf of all of us, they reported more near misses. So, for the division category, for the division category, so it is retail and car division. The retail and car division. The objective they set for themselves is to report 9,600 near misses 
for 12 months sliding. But they reported 7,536, which is about 79%. Then we we'll scale it down, we we'll look at it. Let's look at the region that reported more near misses. Or let me see the region that maybe surpassed their objective or have higher percentage. Let's put it that. So on the third position is Lagos with 82%. The second is New Lagos with 90%. And the first goes to Benin region with 95%. So I will call on the MD to present this to the division. So we will collect it on behalf of the Benin region. Yes, on behalf of the Benin region. I will call Abdullah because of his leadership role. So, Alaji Abdullah, please. A round of applause. But I think it's important for me to say something. Uh, I would really love to appreciate what the team of uh, Retail and CAD have done. Uh, because if we talk about retail, we have stations in this country spread all over the country. So these guys that are reporting these near misses, imagine somebody traveling in the east, imagine somebody traveling in the north, with all the attendant risk they pass through. So team, Retail and CAD, Thank you so much for the excellent job that you are doing, visiting all our stations and making sure that we operate within the company's safety guidelines. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So, we go to operating site. For the operating site. Number one is Lagos Blending Plant. I will call on our HIDB HLCS to help to present this. And Bolaji will receive on behalf of the Lubricant Division. We receive, for, we receive it for Lagos Blending Plant, please. A round of applause, please. They got plenty plants. So, like Abdullah, I also like to appreciate the entire lubricants team. It's not easy, especially uh, being the people that look after the golden egg or that lay it. Um, despite all the pressure, Katie, Katie, uh, the first question, MD. As I enter this room this morning, the first question MD asked me, how is my lubricant? So despite the pressure to produce, to dispatch, to sell, um, you are still, because we head, and it's real, safety is the bedrock of our business. If we don't have um, a safe operation, then the business cannot be sustained. Thank you guys for all you do and for what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, this is an interesting part of it. So it's just to appreciate the individual that reported more near misses in the past 12 months. So on the third is Lawrence Nizigbe from Apapa Depot. He reported 48 near misses. So then, additional town heat of July reported 71 near misses. Then, Christopher Ike 
of Lagos blending plant reported 191 near misses. So I will call MEC from EMP to help, help us present this one. So Obina will receive on behalf of uh, Christopher. Obina, please. Exactly. You know, um, I'm very delighted to hear that you know some people do take time to actually document this. I'm one of those people. I see something I'm like this is wrong, and then I shout, "Please tell them would come and fix it all." And then it's, I say it's fixed, but somebody's reported it. And on behalf of the managing director, he said specifically to thank the three people who had the highest reporting. And to thank all of us in this room and online, all of us in the company, for what we do in terms of reporting. He expects the numbers to climb up, but he also asks that for each of these three persons who reported near misses, he'd like to give a gift because he thinks that they have done very well above and beyond. So on behalf of the managing director, I will present a hundred thousand naira to each of them. Thank you very much. Thank you, MD. Thank you, ED, HLCS. Thanks, EMC. <laughs> So we can see. So actually, reward is an important element of safety management system. So it is good. So and of course, we have sanction as well too. <laughs> so permit us, because this uh, video we want to see is just five minutes. I want us to see it because it was put together by our people locally. So let's just see. Then after that, we will have the closing remark from the EDHRCS. Thank you. Uh, Ma, I want to move over so that we still have gifts now. Let me move. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, it's not leadership for the encouragement. In line with the 100 years anniversary, we decided to put a video together to show us where we started from. You know, we're looking at the challenges but also put in notes that we've had some technological progress and then some improvement on our site. So this video tells us the we're celebrating 100 years. The video, please.
again, trying to make everything work for us. A lot of people, number one is the leadership team that we have. Can we please celebrate them? For their support, for my GM, wonderful team. Thank you so much. But there are also people that also worked behind the screen. They were there day and night. Please, uh, where's Agosa? Agosa, I don't know if he's here. He's a wonderful guy. Can we please celebrate Agosa? Akinyo Day, HSCQ team. Debo, Mr. Emade. Um, please remind me, oh, on your day, G. My GM, oh, my GM. Please celebrate our team. <laughs> celebrate our team. Where is Michael Oluwatoyi? Wonderful guy. He put this, this, this uh, video together. Wonderful guy. Michael Oluwatoyi. Celebrate him, please. And um, Joke, where are you? Joke. Where is she? I saw her some. Joke, celebrate her. Oh, James, no, oh, rub you. Our boss said day. Our boss said day. Shalom. Shalom. Please celebrate our team. Oh. We are strong. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. So maybe, uh, Yemis, Auntie Yemis, maybe you just from. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry. Let's hear something from. It's a word from them. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, MG. Good morning, Jack colleagues. You will see Debo and myself. I'm Antoine, uh, Executive General Manager, Deepwater Geoscience and Reservoir for, uh, for Total uh, Upstream in Nigeria. So we are very glad actually to be uh, part of this uh, celebration. I mean, uh, you have to give a round of applause for yourself actually because it was a very, it was a very well organized uh, celebration. Well done to, to every, every, every one of us. Uh, um, when I was uh, looking, I mean, uh, the, the, the presentation, I'm very glad to see that indeed we are just one family. I mean, the total energy family. And uh, we, are, we hear the same messages. We, we have made a, a long journey together, actually. And in, in our industry, we all have we share some similarities, actually. We are dealing with a very, uh, uh, very, let's say, uh, high-prone uh, activity that can lead to major, major incidents. And we need, uh, on a day-by-day -day basis, we need to be careful. And I see that and hear that, indeed, we have a safety culture that, that is in place. And that's very reassuring for, for, for the company. And if indeed we celebrate for 100 years, it's because we are doing something right, actually. And we just need to keep it up, keep it up for, for our own good, because when I was also looking at the videos, it must be very uh, sad for people to lose their lives when they go to, to work. And this is something that we should not tolerate. We should do actually everything to make sure that we are all safe for us, for our families, and indeed for, for the company. So thank you very much for inviting us uh, to, to attend this celebration. Actually, you will see, I think she take uh, a, good, a good feedback. I mean, the near miss challenge. That, <laughs> that we need, <laughs> we need uh, to, to keep it up and make sure that indeed we, we can beat all those records. So thank you very much for, for this celebration. And I wish you a very good World of Day safety for, for every one of us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Just to let us know also that we have our own team that will be, will be joining EMP for today's event. So 2 p.m., we have um, Onye Deji, Gombe, and Mr. Disa. They will be presenting us also with the EMP team. Finally, for our contractors, can we please celebrate them? Please stand up and let's celebrate you before GM, ED, HRO comes up. Can we please celebrate our contractors? Thank you. I'm glad it's still morning. I'm afraid I'd have to say good afternoon. So good morning, everyone. I think it's been a fantastic uh, couple of minutes commemorating the World Day for Safety. And I particularly like the spread of the audience for this year because we've gone beyond just total energy people. We've gone to our contractors and even some suppliers. 
so that they understand. Because when we're all in unison, then I think we would all be safer when we all understand what it is that is expected from each and every one of us. Return on experience, a centenary, there must be a lot, a lot more than what has been shared. Of course, um, this, is a no, this is a nutshell, a quick nutshell of uh, ex return on experiences. In a centenary, there would have been loads and loads more. We've seen the ones of magnitude, but we should not ignore the little ones as well, because it's the little ones that become the big ones if we ignore them. So please, anomalies continue to front load. Uh, not, not just for the 100,000 Naira prize that you would get, but for all our safety. So I say a big thank you to each and every one of us for being here. Um, the knowledge that we've gained today, I would encourage us to please, in our team meetings as well, ensure that if people really do understand what is expected of us, because there's a technological aspect, there's the organizational aspect, but very, very important is the human element, because if that is missing, then we will have issues. So. I'd say thank you very much, enjoy the rest of the day, and keep safe, and please continue to put in the returning experiences. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. We're finished. <laughs> thank you. We'll just have photographs outside. <laughs>